Hello everyone and welcome back to Around the World in 80 Planes. For this flight I'm flying from Budapest to Belgrade in a Let L410. This is a freeware plane and the interior looks very good. Uh, the overhead panel too in fact. So yes, a very good rendition of this plane. From the outside, the texture is actually excellent. And uh, there are a few other textures for it. This is a check plane. Uh, somebody in the comments mentioned that I should fly a check plane. This was planned already. In fact, uh, for the last flight, I had planned to fly a, a Vector EV55, which is also a check plane. There are a lot of check planes. Um, but uh, it turned out that that flight would have been much longer than an hour if I had chosen the EV55, so I went with the A50. I'll save the EV55 for a later flight. Anyway, but this time we do get to fly this let L410 and uh, let's get started here. We are going to begin with the Apollo 12 audio, picking it up where we left off. They were after the second EVA preparing to uh, leave the lunar surface. And so here we go. This is Apollo Control. We have heart rate information now for the second EVA. There we go. The peak rates for each of the crewmen uh, were between 165 and 170. The low rates uh, ran 80 to 90. For the better part of the VA, uh, both crewmen's heart rates were above 100. The Average BTU consumption was uh, 1,000 for the Commander Pete Conrad and 1,100 for the Lunar Module Pilot Albine. I'm totally not sure why we need to know their heart rate and uh, BTU consumption, but hey. And why those are the Intrepid major Houston, pieces uh, of information that we learn. The storage of the TV and also the equipment which is put on the floor by the Z-27. We'll go over the city center once again before heading south. Okay, we're right at that point. We're just ready for you. Okay, Pete, on first, uh, you can fold the TV handle and stow it in the LIOH canister bracket on the engine cover, lens up. Secure the TV cable end to the camera. Pad the camera with utility towels in the upper boot bay. Replace the neural Replace the neural knob, hold down. Secure camera with uh, utility straps. Wrap the straps around the lens and the neural knobs. Understand. As it is, this is gonna be a pretty long trepid, flight too. Uh, give me a call when you're ready for some information on the equipment to go by Z-27. Okay, that'll be 10, 15 minutes. Because of the choice of plane, I had to rearrange it a bit. Uh, it was originally supposed to be Budapest to Sofia in Bulgaria, but uh, because in this plane is not quite uh, so fast, expect, uh, lost I went with Belgrade about, instead. Uh, one to two minutes. We have a handover. Okay. Okay. Okay, Houston, start talking to us about uh, the gear you want us to tie down back of the OPS. Roger, Pete. Okay, first point there is ensure the Z-27 bulkhead is protected. You can use uh, data books and towels for that purpose. And we suggest also on tying down the equipment uh, and rocks which you have in the bags there that goes on the floor next to the Z-27 uh, by the OPS that you use two additional strands of the utility straps. Oh, they will go I had the raised the flaps. The jet, I had raised uh, the flaps. Bag to the ISA attached fitting. That's and the D I'm sure you could see that I had raised step. the flaps. So I'm a little bit miffed. Total. 
Um, well, but I can aileron trim this out. This is not the first time we've had this problem. Clear the last part to get in. Okay, uh, we suggest that you use two additional strands of the utility straps. Now this will go from the top of the jettison bag to the ISA fitting. That's the D-ring on the mid-section step. This will give you a total of four strands. Essentially what we're looking for here, Al, is to tie this thing down uh, with as many strands as you can, at least four, so that uh, in the docking we don't uh, get this thing coming off the floor and uh, busting the straps. Okay, well I guess that's as close as I'm going to get to the city center. I understand. Now uh, turn south now. Uh, there seems to be a highway on the map to follow. Um, which one is it over here? I think it's that one. Hello, Nick. Pete and Al are uh, just finishing up the uh, post EVA, and it looks as though they're pretty far ahead. I have a little bit of time to sit back and relax. Yep, this is an especially a, spiffy uh, plane. Map update for Rev 29 when you're ready to copy. Yep, it would seem like that's our highway. See what our red lines are like. Nick, uh, say again, you're broken up. Well, nothing on the speed dial actually. But Roger, will do. Calouet. One three eight. Maximum operating speed is three fifty, it looks like, and uh two sixty forward maneuvering. One three nine. Okay, well. That's in kilometers per hour, of course. Roger, On the map, this highway is the M5. Now it feels like I should have some yaw trim Nick, on. Uh, would you go back in your flight plan to 13130? And uh, we missed a crew status report at that point.
And Pete, uh, you're still uh, quite a bit ahead. Looks as though the furthest uh, you could go up to in the checklist is on surface 101. Lift off minus 240. Uh, you'll have to hold at that point until uh, we get you the right uh, CSM state vector. Okay, no problem. I'm not. Uh, I'm not hustling on that. We're, we're we're just sitting here now. We got the spacecraft all squared away. I'm saying everything's tied down. But man, oh man, is it filthy in here? We must have 20 cows and dust, dirt, all kinds of junk. Roger, Pete. That'll be an interesting yeah, zero G. I think this right, Al and I think. Uh, Looks like a couple of bituminous coal miners right at the moment. <laughs> but we're happy. Happy coal so miners. There's a lot of people down here. Quite a bright, clear day today. Again, real world weather is on. Well, Roger, Intrepid, uh, you're a couple seconds off. We can give you a more accurate time hack if you like. No, I'm fine. I'm taking the computer out of standby and get the time, okay? Roger. Uh, I, I just have to think about it. I haven't uh, messed with the mission timer since we landed. Stand by on that beat and we'll get the latest word on it. Also, how are the package temperatures doing? Are they running like they expected? Pete looks good on both counts. The uh, CCIG came up and is looking nominal, and the uh, temperatures are looking nominal. Very good. All equipment running, huh? That's a firm. And I'll tell you, from watching those plots down here, that PSE is sure doing the job. Great. Houston, uh, Trepid. Intrepid Houston, go ahead. Roger, uh, we've been running our, uh, if you look at our schedule here, we've been running our tape. I think the side and front views are better uh, according to the overall. Schedule. Yeah, because the EVA is ran longer, do we have anything left on that for SN Rendezvous? Uh, can you check that out for us? Roger, will do, Pete. Stand by. Clipper, we copy. And in your liver, probably still have your port out of last night. That's 10 hours of sleep. Copy uh, seven hours and uh, one one zero one nine. And uh, Dick, we're having a little bit of trouble uh, understanding you. Sound. Dick, uh, you sound slightly garbled. Uh, I'm wondering if the uh, microphone is in the uh, uh, correct position relative to your mouth. Dick Gordon sounded garbled for the entire time uh, the the surface crew was down better. there. Been a rough time for communicating to the command module.
that sound is from the tape. Real strong signal down here, but the transmission is still slightly garbled. Stirring cryos. That'll be uh, that'll okay. be the heart-stopping moment in uh, Apollo 13. All nice and good here. It's worth noting at this point, of course, I've cut out all the pauses in the audio that were basically more than 30 seconds long. And uh, not really necessary to mention that during the EVAs because there was very little to cut. I'd like to give you the T-17 and T-18 liftoff pads before CSM LOS coming up in about 8 minutes. But there are generally much longer pauses during all of these clips than is apparent. So there's probably three minutes of silence uh, between those cryo tank stirring messages. Roger, Intrepid. Yankee Clipper, are you ready to copy? Roger. T-17, 140. Zero five one five T eighteen one four two zero three four zero. We're approaching the city of Kixkemet. At least that's the best I can do as far as pronunciation. The highway actually avoids it. It uh, turns okay, to traffic, the right traffic, here, four, zero, zero, five, to the west, five, one, four, two, zero, three, four, zero. curving around the city. We'll fly right over. Actually, there's this junction where uh, it's got this uh, highway or road that actually goes through the city. And, uh, Houston and Trepid standing by to copy the P-22 at time. And apparently, and the, uh, the game has decided to put trees in the middle of that road. We're oh, well. ready to debrief with you, standing by for your questions. Okay, Intrepid, uh, we are not uh, planning to do that P-22. Uh, the job's been done already, so uh, we can uh, forget the P-22 coming up at uh, 140 plus 00. zero. Uh, the runway to the left is an Air Force Base, Kex okay. Kemet Air Force Base. We have your uh, consumables pad when you're ready to copy. We're ready to copy. Consumables at GET of 13700. RCS A 80%. B 76. O2. And we'll give you first the descent and the ascent. 47. Nine six H two O three nine or point five nine nine or point two amp hours seven two nine or decimal seven five seven two decimal three right here copied all that. Okay, Trumpet and on your question on the tape recorder. Nice park we've got here. We show that uh, under the way we'd normally figure it, that uh, 
by extending those two EVAs, we come up with 10 and a half hours, whereas a tape recorder normally goes 10. However, uh, those assumptions are first 100% uh, activity in the descent, ascent, and the rendezvous, and 30% activity on the EVA. Uh, the 100% figure is most likely high, and the 30% figure is most likely low. So uh, it's pretty uh, difficult for us to uh, come up and tell you exactly when you're going to be cutting off in the ascent, or if you will at all. Okay, so let's just go ahead and run a further schedule. Roger. Okay, Intrepid, and our first comment on the EVA. The uh, Gold Flight team members back here would like to uh, give you their congratulations for a job well done. Thank you. Danny Intrepid, uh, we have a few questions. First one of which is, uh, on the way bags and they're cracking. Uh, could you briefly describe uh, the problem that you encountered in the cracking and uh, what the reason may be for it? Well, uh, they seem to, uh, when I folded the first big one, and uh, let, let me think a minute. Oh, I know, the contingency sample uh, one, I believe, has some holes in it, doesn't it, Al? I, I, I can't remember on that, but anyhow, the first big one uh, wound up just uh, about an inch and a half long crack appeared in it when I was folding it. Uh, just Not like sure about the streaks on the landscape. And, uh, that appears to be... Where uh, are those supposed to be? Might be clouds affecting the color of the way, landscape, or whether it's actually like with that? With I must, I have to think it's uh, clouds. Because, I mean, there's okay. cropland here, Roger, and that would be pretty that uniform was, uh, in color. Can you relate it to a, a given thermal situation? In other words, were they all cold at the time, or uh, really couldn't you say that? Well, I, re I really couldn't say. I, uh, I think y'all realize from the angle that we're at that the... Uh, Mesa was in the sun. Did, did y'all know that? Okay, no, uh, we didn't know that. At least I wasn't aware of that one. Okay. He's not completely in the sun, but it's almost in the sun. Uh, I don't know. Uh, I say almost, you know, there's a pierce. The coloration here there, suggests that the patchiness might not be merely clouds. Roger, Pete. Yankee Clipper, uh, one minute to LOS. We'll see you on the other side. Especially that bit near the horizontal stabilizer. Roger. That patchiness can't really be caused by clouds. Question two, Intrepid. Uh, could you uh, discuss the failure of the camera handler? The camera handle. Yes, sir, the narrow knob came off the shaft that it was mounted to, therefore allowing all the pieces to fall apart. Roger. The town to and, our uh, left... how did oh. the hammer fail? Did it fail in uh, some way other than just the uh, chips of the coating coming off? That's where our left has a long name. I. No, that's all. Just the coding. Was Make an off. effort. Uh, Kiskan Felegaza? Kiskan Felegaza. That's as good as I can do. Okay, it's K I S K U N F E L E G Y H A Z A. Pretty long name. The cable. But and also, uh, exactly where did you put it? Also, a name that's got a good smattering well, of consonants and vowels, so... The fact that I wasn't looking where I was going, uh, I get tangled up in the S-band antenna wire every once in a while. That one's not as bad as the uh, 
TV, though, because the TV one I appreciate that. flat. Uh, the SBN one lays flat. We put the SBN out just like uh, we agreed to do it to minimize running over the wire, which was uh, out uh, the uh, plus Y direction, pretty much. Roger. And uh, Pete, when you went back to check the CCIG, uh, could you tell us how close you got to it? Whoop, uh, I was checking the map there. Didn't mean to turn quite uh, so much. I just uh, walked up to within about, I walked up to within about uh, five feet of it. Okay, thank you. Okay, any question on the uh, third film pack which we used? Uh, how much of that was used on the inside, and uh, where in Traverse did you pick it up and uh, and change it to uh, one of the existing uh, cameras? Well, I got some bad news for you. Some good news. The first place, the third magazine was a color magazine, and all it had on it were some shots that were taken. Uh, earth rise and a few things like that coming around on descent and unfortunately Al and I got our signals crossed and it's outside on the lunar surface right now. Oh now, dear. What we did was take the black and white magazine off of Al's camera when it failed and put it on my camera and used it up so that we have two complete black and white of the second EVA and two complete colors of the first EVA the only thing that's missing is the color magazine that had uh, undocking and uh, a couple other mundane things like that on it at uh, the beginning of, uh, of the LEM operation. And uh, unfortunately, that's out there in the saddlebag. They didn't catch that one. Okay. Uh, you did get the uh, surveyor, though. Oh yeah, we have all the surveyor pictures and everything, but they're all black and white. Real good. And lastly, uh, we've been looking at your uh, power consumption profile and noticed that you're not using as much as uh, they initially anticipated. They attribute that to the uh, lack of use of the floodlights. Uh, would you confirm that you've not had the floodlights on since the beginning of the first EVA? That's right, we haven't had the floodlights on. Also, we've used the LCD pump very, very little. Uh, every once in a while, we give ourselves a squirt. The spacecraft, in contrast to the eels, uh, we've been very warm, and uh, we've been comfortably warm uh, with just air in our suit. And uh, I'd say the temperature inside here right now is running in the low 70s somewhere, and it's been that way ever since. Here. Highway seems to have narrowed Roger quite a bit. Okay, the next the major question. city uh, is basically on the border with Serbia, a, uh, or readings. close enough to that. We're still a ways away from it, okay, but it's called what? Zeged. S Z E G E D. Idea mine may quit running. Okay, Pete, we copy a uh, zero four zero two two and uh, say the second. One one zero two zero, and I think that's what it was the last time I gave it to you. Now that's correct, Pete. A uh, question on the maybe it quit running. Could be. A question on the uh, equipment jettison. Was there anything uh, other than what's already called out for that was uh, jettisoned or not jettisoned? Now we jettisoned everything according to the checklist. Roger. Hey Pete, how's the inside of the cabin look about now? 
Down to our right there is Castellic. It's very neat and orderly, uh, except for the fact that it's very dirty. Kind of a neat, orderly coal mine. And that's about the size of it. Um, the only thing that we do have, of course, is the LIO-18 canister container, which now has the TV camera in it. Roger. Antenna is down and stowed. Roger, and uh, we also understood from Al out there on the surface that that only uh, partially deployed, only got up around 60 degrees. Okay, um, when I was, uh, I, I was the one to put it up, and when I put it back down, I discovered that I hadn't turned it to last about 20%, and uh, so it went all the way up. I don't function correct. I think I can put it all the way up. Roger, Pete, the uh, comm was uh, beautiful. Though. We had probably the best of any sim we've had. <laughs> well, I concur, the comm really has been super. Listen, that uh, it's more magnificently this is a shambles, though. Say, Pete, now when you climb back in, you uh, you terminated at three plus fifty-five. And uh, both of you were, uh, your reserve was determined by oxygen. And plus one, the reserve was uh, two plus zero five, which would have given you a uh, six hour plus. And the plus two was uh, one plus five zero, which is uh, pretty close to uh, six hours also. Well, that's, uh, that's very good to know, and uh, there's no reason why you can't stay out there and work that long. You don't get tired. Get a little thirsty, though, I bet. We were. We were really thirsty at the second he came to that. I don't, I don't know, did you add up how far we went? I, I think we made a pretty good trip out there. Uh, Pete, we're estimating uh, something over a mile for the full circuit. Okay, we're approaching Zegit. That's not counting some of the side jaunts you made. We've been, yeah, we've been trying to follow our tracks out here with the monocular. You can sort of see it on that river there. The, uh, Oops, sorry. the other thing that I, I... You got your map book there? Let me talk to you about this big blocky rim. Try to find the name of the river. Yeah, stand by on that. Though. Tissa or right, uh, okay, Tissa goes up. Yeah, yeah, it's the Tissa River and it splits to something else. Okay, it's the uh, great big map. It's the crater. Maybe Tissa. The one that's got the really big box on it, just outside the lips on map A. Okay, Pete, uh, which is a great big map? Okay, the one that shows the landing list, it's number 39. Wait a minute, uh, let me look just a second. It's number 30 chart. Now that, that crater, is uh, on our horizon, and we can see it from here, and uh, I can sit here with the map and pick out the really great big boulders and everything. And uh, one of the problems up here is there's nothing to break up uh, 
or there's no, nothing between you and, and any well, lots of the power lines going into the city like a rock at the just distance line and uh, when we first landed I, I i really thought that crater was uh like a thousand feet away but it's obviously a whale of a lot further than that away and it looks like it's right next to us and uh, we can uh, use binocular and scan those gigantic boulders that are there that's the only one that's visible to us on the horizon. But I wanted to point out, uh, you can get an idea in a, of uh, the fact that, that that really looks like it's about a thousand feet away from us. Uh, you know how far away it is from us, but how difficult it is to judge distance. Roger, Pete. Uh, maybe the use of that lamp shadow then was pretty pretty useful. I know in the beginning uh, you doubted that the shadow was really that that long. And uh, apparently, uh, it was telling you the truth. We got to depart the highway for yeah, a bit. Yeah, I think you're probably right. The other thing is, from the from the spacecraft here, looking at the ALSAP, it looks like it's right under the window. And uh, Al and I are best guesses that it's at least 450 feet away now. Roger. Hey, I got a question for you. Just, uh, what do the experts think about uh, doing an alignment uh, in orbit now uh, versus what we got here on the lunar surface yesterday? Unfortunately, there's uh, stand by. Also, that crater patch we there that's in a uh, different season, so I'll just avoid looking at Well, there's another position. one over there, isn't there? Hmm, we're surrounded by odd patches. Looks like it's just a hop, skip, and a jump. Pete, we'd like to go ahead and stick with the procedures we have right now. We can uh, give you an update on it after the two P-57s and exertion. There's a chance that we may not need it. Okay, well, no, I'm not, I wasn't proposing that we didn't do it. We're going to go ahead and do it. I was just uh, curious after uh, we got a good RLS, which we've never gotten before out of the 57 yesterday, what everybody thought about that. Hey, Houston, uh, one thing that uh, occurred to me, the reason we're not using the floodlights is because that... Uh, Overhead hatch is uh, not rigged right now. Micro switch uh, all the time. And uh, I should say the micro switch is rigged right now. It's okay. And uh, those floodlights were on all the time. We were getting ready to come down over the night side. We had the floods on in the lower ones. We're still always on. So we pulled that breaker and we've uh, left it out all the rest of the time. That's the reason. You might remember that when they first Roger, entered the lead they had that problem with the 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 lights constantly being on basically because of a refrigerator door like switch constantly being triggered or uh, yeah constantly reading open instead of closed and so they had to pull a breaker now of course when they occupied the limb now, they think that pushed that breaker for, back in uh, but safe four and a half maybe even five hours uh, you get hungry as yes he's saying that they enough. decide to pull it out because it kept running the lights. I don't think so if you jot down good just before you left. Rough I patch of ground here. Really get thirsty though. Maybe they can come up with something that you can put on the inside of your helmet there. Something like not exactly like the uh guess it's sort of related uh, to the river. Valve device or something where you could uh, maybe reach over and take At it. At some point the river flowed water. around here. Yeah, you're only thirsty because you're throat dry and, and and stuff in one swallower and I think it, that picks up right there. Roger, Al. Say, did uh, either one of you kneel down in order to get anything off the surface or did you use the uh, newly developed uh, bead technique of holding on to uh, the surveyor parts bag and uh, lowering uh, the commander to the surface? <laughs> Yeah, uh, well, we use uh, all kinds of things like that. Uh, you could take the uh, 
shovel and stick it in the ground and uh, just do a one-arm push-up uh, and uh, lean down and uh, pick up a rock off the ground with the other hand. It's really a ridiculous way to do it. If you had a suit that would have why you'd have the whole program wired. We're but, still uh, basically along that. the Tisa so, River. Yeah, I fell over once out there and now picked me back up again. It's no big deal. Uh, but in the, in the same sense, there, uh, you're always messing around trying to get down there to get these rocks. And uh, we did kneel down a couple of times. I knelt down and picked some stuff up. And, and it's particularly easy if you got that uh, hand tool carrier with you. But we really do need to kind of think, uh, need to come up with some sort of strap or something that would allow you to lean over and grab a rock that won't fit in on the pond. Roger. Yeah, I mean, you can imagine how hard it is to get certain rocks off the ground in those suits. They had little things to pick them up, but not all of those would fit in the grabbers. Roger, Intrepid. This is Apollo Control Houston. Uh, we're at uh, 139 hours, uh, five minutes uh, now into the flight. Uh, meanwhile, in Mission Control Center Houston, uh, we are having a shift change. Uh, Heading for a town Dr. called Senta. Members of his orange team are now aboard. Along the river. And a news conference will be held in the uh, news center within uh, the next few minutes with uh, Flight Director Jerry Griffin. We're I think that's uh, the one that we see in front of us right six there. Minutes into the flight, and this is Apollo Control, Houston. Okay, Houston, you see that 212? That's the same thing we had before, also. Roger, Intrepid, we copy, and we concur. We expect it. Yeah, these ripples, I guess, are also related to the river. This is Apollo Control Houston at uh, 139 in the hours, uh, 13 minutes now to the flight Apollo 12. We're uh, some two hours and 50 minutes away from time of ignition. Lots of beeping there. And uh, Conrad and Bean uh, start turning their attentions now to uh, preparations for liftoff. Both guidance systems of prime and backup are powered up and systems tests are performed. The uh, two guidance systems are aligned, uh, the AGs to the pings. The rendezvous radar uh, will be turned on and a self-test is performed. Uh, the iner uh, inertial platform... Uh... Oh, what happened? Yeah. Oh, okay. We're picking up the conversation. We have a uh, update on the uh, star Artur Arturus on... Uh page 102 of the surface checklist. We'd like you to use Procyon 16 or Sirius 15. And that's Detent 1. So that's the town of Senta to our right? The uh, inertial platform uh, is aligned for the uh, rendezvous radar tracking uh, of Yankee Clipper on its uh, last overhead pass, this pass, uh, prior to liftoff. Uh, the radar is turned uh, off following this and remains off during ascent. At uh, this time, uh, we will turn the uh, release line over for a news conference in the news center. Uh, the tape uh, will be turned over directly uh, to transcript. We're at uh, one, uh, 139 hours, uh, 15 minutes into the flight, and this is Apollo Control Houston. Speaking of rivers but, uh, to follow, hours we could have gotten quite far so during this uh, journey, 12. just following the Danube all over the place. Houston, uh, we've had a uh, change in uh, capsule communicators. We'll meet up with the Jerry Danube Carr, soon. Uh, now aboard, uh, replacing uh, Ed Gibson at that position. And it flows uh, through Belgrade as well. While uh, the line was down, uh, Pete Conrad uh, from the Intrepid uh, did call and ask. Uh, for a, a liftoff time, uh, Jerry did pass. Delta. 
I don't know why it keeps interrupting him if he's gonna do an update. Uh, Houston, uh, Intrepid. Intrepid, Houston, go. In theory, he has control. Well, I guess the, the live one he will want to allow himself to be interrupted by. Uh, not yet, Pete. This was a tape. He could just control it. Give me an overhead time, so I can watch you go this by. This is a serious river. This Tisa River. Really meanders and changes course a lot, apparently. Jerry Carr did pass along uh, an estimated uh, liftoff time. Uh, 142 hours, uh, 3 minutes, uh, 47 seconds. Our displays and mission control uh, sh show us that uh, Intrepid uh, should enter orbit uh, with an apolune of uh, 46.3 nautical miles, a paralune of 8.8 .8 nautical miles. A uh, delta V uh, for that uh, ascent burn would be uh, 6,057 feet per second. About uh, one and a half hours before liftoff, uh, Capcom Jerry Carr will be passing the uh, liftoff maneuver pad to it, Intrepid. Presently, we're at uh, two hours, uh, 13 minutes uh, prior to ignition. At uh, 139 hours, uh, 56 minutes, uh, continuing to monitor. This is Apollo Control, Houston. Intrepid Houston, uh, Clipper should be overhead at 140-0410. We're flying over a town called Ada, ADA. Okay, thank you. I'm going to check the plane change and see how good you are. Uh, stand by, Clipper break. Uh, Intrepid, this is Houston. Uh, Clipper wants to know if you're up VHF. No, but we will come up VHF. Roger, break. Uh, Clipper, Houston, Cancel Intrepid says he'll be up. Uh, Clipper, Houston, what would you like? VHFA or B simplex? Say again, Clipper. In retrospect, yeah, we should have just followed the Danube all the way down to Belgrade. We are going an alternate route, but that's alright. This is a less trafficked river. Uh, Intrepid Houston, uh, come up VHF ranging uh, configuration, over. Will do. It's Apollo Control Houston. We presently show Yankee Clipper in an orbit of uh, 61.7 nautical miles by uh, 58.7 nautical miles. We're now at uh, 139 hours, uh, 53 minutes into the flight. It's Apollo Control Houston. Uh, we're at uh, 139 hours, uh, 58 minutes uh, now into the flight. Our display here in Mission Control uh, shows that the uh, concentric sequence initiate burn. Roger, Dick, are you going to use the uh, zero degree pitch or 22 degree pitch down for this pass? Concentric sequence initiate burn is uh, scheduled for 143 hours, uh, 1 minute, uh, 50 seconds, uh, with a delta V of uh, 49.2 feet per second. This burn, uh, done at Ap Apollon uh, following liftoff, has the effect of raising the paralloon a uh, half a revolution later. Uh, we would look at numbers at that time uh, for Intrepid of uh, 46.8 by uh, 43.6, uh, some uh, 15 nautical miles below uh, the Yankee Clipper. We're uh, two hours, uh, four minutes, 18 seconds away from time of ignition. And this is Apollo Control Houston.
We're uh, between two oh, yes. cities Clipper here. Intrepid on VHF, One's called right. Besage, as best I can do. B E C E J with uh, accent on the C. Oh, yeah. But the other one is Novi Besage. Besage? Uh, I don't know. B E C E J. Yankee Clipper Houston, go. So, new Besage. That's not one of those accent marks I'm particularly good at pronouncing. Roger, Dick. That's a little too high. Did you find that right now? Uh, Houston Intrepid, uh, we had a visual on him, uh, although I couldn't talk to him on VHF. Intrepid Houston, Roger. Uh, Clipper, this is Houston. Did you read uh, uh, Intrepid on VHF? Uh, Roger, are you sure it was an S-band? Because, you know, we're in the relay mode. Let me depart uh, the Tisa River and head straight for the Danube because there's a reasonably large city there, a little bit to our southwest. Okay. The city's called uh, Novi Sad. And then we can just follow the Danube down to Belgrade. Oh, weird uh, sounds. Roger, Dick. Uh, we've copied your data. I have no idea what those sounds are about. Uh, Clipper Houston, uh, we'll give that data a good evaluation before we do anything with it. P-22 reference there is the uh, orbital navigation program uh, for the uh, command module Yankee Clipper. We're at uh, 140 hours and nine minutes uh, now into the flight and uh, one hour uh, and 55 minutes away from time of ignition uh, for Intrepid. Intrepid Houston, go. Got sort of an interesting thing going on in the gas right now. I didn't notice earlier, but it may just be because the lights are brighter now. I'm getting a all eight flags, uh, both the address and the information registered at about uh, one fifth of millionth of the normal uh, numbers, and a it's pulsing every second. Roger, Al. It's very green over here. Very, very but green. I turned down the base level just a little bit. Uh, not noticeable. That was Al Bean uh, describing some uh, illumination on his uh, AGS uh, display, the abort guidance system uh, display, abort uh, intrepid. Intrepid, you ready for my RCS hot fire? Intrepid Houston, roger, fire away. Okay. Intrepid Houston. Go. Uh, roger, Al, uh, Fredo is here. He and I have both seen that, uh, phenomena on your uh, data during testing uh, of uh, most all the spacecrafts up at Bethpage and uh, it's probably an EMI. That's what we've been talking about but we thought we'd just touch in on it. Roger, I think TRW has got to work up on this problem. Go Houston with uh, roll pitch yaw. Roger, Pete. Intrepid Houston. 
Don't panic. We just flew over our SK and erect the ball uh, as we're up on our steerable. Roger, I was just going to tell you, Pete, we lost some of the data on that uh, fire jack. Okay, you want me to give it to me again? Uh, stand by, I'll tell you what we need. I never gave you yaw. Yeah. Uh, Pete, can you just start over from the beginning? Well, we can see the Danube there. Okay. And we can see the city of Novi Sad as well. Apparently, from that last report, uh, the erectable S-band antenna outside uh, was felled by that uh, RCS test. We're at 140 hours, uh, 14 minutes. Sound right. Intrepid Houston, uh, I've got a K-Factor update for you when you're ready. Okay. Roger, R1 is 00140. R2 is all zips. R3 is 00033. Okay, 00140, all zips. Three zips, three three. Roger. Okay, uh, have the uh, hot fire left. Uh, Intrepid Houston, that went kind of fast. Uh, give us a chance to take a look at our tapes. Okay. Uh, Intrepid uh, Houston, the passive seismometer just verified that you did do your hot fire. <laughs> nice to have the seismometer working. Very good. <laughs> you got a kick out of it, too. Does the passive seismometer say my hot fire go? <laughs> I guess we could uh, count that as a rhetorical question. Follow Control Houston. Um, Jerry Carr reported uh, recordings of the pa on the passive seismometer um, verifying the hot fire of the RCS. Uh, this data was received in our uh, okay. experiment staff Before support room. It is Novi Sad. I, I don't know if there's any particular uh, sites to see go. here. to uh, hang a left. Clipper Houston, roger, go ahead. Trump at Houston, I have a LEM ascent pad and a CSI pad. Okay, uh, just a second. Are you ready for my uh, rest of my hot fire? Roger, we're ready. Go ahead. Break clipper, or you can go ahead and torque. Okay, the Danube, once okay, again. Yeah. Okay, I gave you an extra pitch-up fire because we were photographing the effects on the ground. It's quite spectacular. Roger, Pete. And we're ready to copy the launch uh, pad. Roger, LEM ascent pad follows. TIG 142-03-4. Four seven zero zero. Just a reminder, TIG is a time of ignition. Five five three 
five, and then zero, they're uh, giving information zero, that they'll enter zero, into the computer. Three, this seven, zero, includes the Delta V for the plus, burn, zero, the orientation zero, of the craft, zero, and two. stuff like that. Data 47 is plus 37364 plus 05607. Plus it all five, makes a whole lot eight, more sense if you six, have the flight four, plan two, in front of you. And so they have pages where five, they enter all this six, information in. Niner, five, five. Data 465 is plus zero, zero, three, seven, zero. Data 546 is NA. Ignition one rev late is one, four, four. Zero two zero niner Lem weight one zero seven eight niner CSM weight three five three niner zero over Roger copy one four two zero three four seven zero zero five five three five zero 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 three seven zero plus zero 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 two plus three seven three six four plus zero five six zero oh seven plus five eight six four two plus five six nine five five plus zero zero three seven zero NA one four four zero two zero nine zero zero one zero seven eight nine three five three nine zero. That's affirmative, Al. P-32 CSI pad follows. Noun 11. One, four, three, zero, one, five, zero, six, zero. Noun 37. One, four, four, three, eight. All zips. Noun 81. Zero, four, Niner 2, all zips. Data 373 is 01818. 275 is 02780. Ags Delta V's plus 049er 2, all zips, plus 0010. Zero. Over. Roger, one four three zero one five zero six zero. One four four three eight all zeros. Zero four nine two all zeros. Zero one eight one eight. Zero two seven eight zero. Plus zero four nine two. All zeros plus zero zero one zero. Well firmly though. We're not too far away from Belgrade now. I can sort of see the bend in the river that uh, the city should be at. Terminate your battery Bravo charge now, and uh, we'd like to have you put your O2 Tank 1 heaters and your hydrogen Tank 2 heaters back to auto, and uh, dump your wastewater to between. Five. Roger, Yankee Clipper, Houston. Okay, that's it, Dick. Thank you. 
Roger. Apollo Control Houston, uh, we're about uh, five minutes away now from loss of signal with uh, the Yankee Clipper. Next time around, the uh, Yankee Clipper will be on its 30th revolution. And uh, Intrepid will lift off on this, uh, the 30th revolution. We're at uh, 140 hours, 26 minutes, now to the flight of Apollo 12. And the ascent maneuver pad data passed up uh, to Intrepid, uh, which Al Bean copied. Uh, a uh, liftoff time was given of 142 hours, uh, 3 minutes, 47 seconds. Go ahead. Uh, Pete, we'll be sending your uh, gyro compensation uplink to you after you've done your second P-57. Well, the colors are yeah, quite right. different nice here, and the, frankly, the, the quality of the ground section, well, no, actually, quality-wise, okay. it's basically the same. Uh, all the way around. Everything okay? Quite a different color, though. Pad data shows a Obviously, a little bit too bright. Fifty-five hundred and uh, thirty-five feet per second. We're at uh, one hundred and forty hours, twenty-eight minutes uh, now into the flight. Where are you to, Houston? What did uh, Yankee Clipper's uh, orbit finally decay down to? How well did you uh, hit sixty? Uh, remember, uh, because of the mass concentrations on the moon. The orbit of Roger the Pete at 61.9 by 58.4 at CDH. The command module eventually, uh, even in the short yeah, amount of time, decays. And, uh, we're targeting the zero CDH here with this uh, thing, right? That's affirmative. So they started off higher and uh, aimed for okay. it to be around 60 nautical miles. It's being measured in. Close enough to think of that as a hundred kilometers. CDH uh, standing for constant delta height. It's uh, the second uh, maneuver in the rendezvous sequence. Uh, given an, a normal or nominal situation, uh, it could very well turn out to be zero. It's designed to uh, fine tune the orbit. Uh, And uh, with the numbers we're looking at, uh, may very well turn out not to be necessary. Yankee Clipper, Houston, we're about uh, 35 seconds from LOS. Uh, you're looking good, and we're looking for an AOS of 141.17. Well, the river would be it'd be nicer following rivers if. Uh, they consistently had the river texture to them. Instead of the photo scenery texture, if they were properly excluded, but doesn't always happen. We've had uh, loss of signal with the Yankee Clipper. We're at uh, 140 hours, uh, 32 minutes uh, now into the flight. The city quite visible up ahead is Belgrade. And we are looking to land yeah, at LYBE. So... Roger, read you the same. Just a run, one runway. Apollo Houston at 1130. Uh, hours, uh, 46 minutes. Uh, this LYBT flight. seems uh, bigger. We're uh, uh, one hour and 17 minutes away from uh, I guess time that's of ignition. Sort of the away from, uh, big uh, external airport that services the, the area. Storms. 
That's pretty far out from the, the city ignite, center. Uh, running almost uh, 5,000 uh, pounds of propellant uh, through the upper stage of sent engine. Ignition uh, will occur with Yankee Clipper passing uh, just overhead, about uh, 80 nautical miles ahead of Intrepid. Intrepid goes through a short vertical rise and uh, pitches over to climb uh, to altitude horizontally, inserting uh, into orbit uh, with a velocity of uh, nearly uh, 6,000 feet per second and an altitude of some uh, 60,000 feet. It's been uh, a period of quiet uh, between uh, Capcom, Jerry Carr, and uh, Intrepid. The, uh, we've been watching uh, data on the displays and the crew aboard Intrepid has uh, completed uh, loading their uh, abort uh, guidance system ascent uh, targeting uh, data. We're at 140 hours, uh, 48 minutes now into the flight, and this is Apollo Control, Houston. We can see the airport from here. It's to our right. Lag is building. It's Apollo Control, Houston, it's, uh, 140 uh, hours. Uh, we'll, we'll get a good look at the city the first. Uh, we're still looking at a a liftoff time of uh, 142 hours, uh, 3 minutes, uh, 47 seconds. This uh, ascent uh, from the lunar surface is designed to uh, put Intrepid uh, in an initial orbit of uh, 46.3 nautical miles by 8.8 .8 nautical miles. Uh, for the burn, uh, we're looking at... Around here, the river of, has the proper uh, 6, water texture. Seven feet per second. The the first just uh, doesn't have it all the time. Uh, ascent, uh, the concentric uh, sequence initiate is scheduled at uh, 100 and uh, maybe it's height three dependence. Hours, one minute uh, 50 seconds uh, with a delta V of 49.2 feet per second. The burn uh, scheduled uh, to be done at uh, Apollon uh, following liftoff and has the effect of raising the parallel. We're uh, one hour, ten minutes away now from uh, scheduled time of ignition, and this is Apollo Control, Houston. Houston Intrepid. Intrepid, Houston, go. Any objections to us starting to start to seven now? Well, city seems to have very definite areas. There's a particularly laid out area. I Intrepid Houston, uh, we prefer you. I'm currently four turning fire in order towards. To maximize the delta T there. You mean one five, I hope. I strongly suspect there's some history yeah, involved right, here. Fire. Thinking in terms of lift off minus four or five. I'm with you. Apollo Control Houston uh, program uh, 57 reference. There is the uh, lunar surface alignment program for the uh, limb guidance computer. Yeah, that building at, uh, in particular looks mighty hours, suspicious. Uh, minutes, <laughs> uh, flight, and, uh, By which I mean this, that must be significant in some way. This is Apollo Control, Houston. Now we do have that flat problem. So I'm and probably Trump not going to extend them. Roger, Al, would you uh, put battery five on the line now? Uh, before, it wasn't really carrying its load as well as it should have, and we'd like to kind of pre-pre-condition that one, get it a little warmer and uh, get it started early. Okay, I noticed that. We'll do it. Okay. Pre-pre-condition your batteries. 
Okay, time to get into the cockpit, which is not a bad cockpit, of course. I'm good. That's exactly what it did, uh, part of not much. It's sort of pulling to the left here. Let's see how it does. And that's probably because of the flap problem. Apollo Control, Houston, at uh, 141 hours, uh, 9 minutes down to the flight. Uh, we're uh, 55 minutes away from ignition at uh, this time, and uh, some 8 minutes away from uh, reacquiring uh, the command module. Yankee we'll probably Clipper. have the ascent from the lunar surface in, in the next the, flight. Uh, mission Control Center, uh, a period of uh, relatively quiet uh, preparation. No uh, large contingent of uh, persons have arrived yet uh, into the viewing room. However, uh, in the control center proper, uh, certain uh, key NASA management officials as well as uh, fellow astronauts uh, uh, have arrived on the scene. Rocco Patron, uh, Apollo uh, director of the Apollo program is here, uh, as is George Lowe, Chris Kraft, uh, director of flight operations for the Manned Spacecraft Center, Jim McDivitt, uh, manager of the uh, Apollo spacecraft program at MSC, Jim Level, uh, the commander uh, for Apollo uh, 13 uh, is present, Al Worden is here, Donald K. Slayton, uh, Director of Flight Crew Operations, and uh, Tom Stafford. Uh, I'm Chief having of to do a lot of right roll here We're still. At, uh, 141 hours, even with uh, the aileron train. And uh, this is Apollo Control Houston. However, the flap issue affects us. It uh, seems to do so more at lower speeds. Apollo Control Houston at uh, 141 hours, uh, 16 minutes uh, now into the flight. We're less than a minute away now from uh, reacquiring uh, the command module Yankee Clipper. Now on its uh, 30th revolution. Yankee Clipper Houston, how do you read? That's clear, we're standing by for <laughs> Yankee Clipper, we cannot clear. Roger Clipper, reading you the same. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Come on, come on. Roger, Dick. Ooh, sorry about that. The flap was definitely giving me trouble there. Uh, Clipper, Houston, your state vectors are all good, so there'll be no uplink to you this time. Your uh, map update pad is scratched. Whoa, 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 and whoa, 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 uh, but the plane's intact and we have arrived in Belgrade and there doesn't seem to be a tower at this airport right now so I don't even know where to taxi to I think we'll just keep it here okay let me pause the audio right there next time we'll hear the ascent from the lunar surface possibly part of the rendezvous and uh, the next flight will be uh, from Belgrade here to Istanbul in a TU-134. So with that, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this flight. If you did, do press like, and I'll see you next time.